would you like to see something? Good. <laughs> so um, we are really happy to announce today Magnolia 5.0 developer preview. Uh, for those who don't know what the developer preview is, that's a uh, first state, first working version that we are releasing. Should be on the servers after the keynote. Um, the last. It's already on the servers. Already on the servers. Mm -hmm. Um, the last box were fixed yesterday evening, 8 o'clock, so I hope I don't expect new ones. Let's see. Exactly. So, um, if you look at all the um, items that you got from us today, the bags, the t-shirts, the lanyards, the mugs, I hope you like the mugs. Does anybody like the mugs? Yeah? Good. <laughs> Woo! Thank you. <laughs> there is a really new thing about Magnolia 5. And that's these icons. There's more to it than meets the eye. We have these three icons, and we call them, for hopefully obvious reasons, the Trinity icons. And we really like them. We like them so much that we printed them on everything, as you, as you see. This is the... <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to hand this around, but it's a bit too heavy. This is the apps icon. This allows you to launch apps wherever you are. This is the Pulse. The Pulse is really the messaging center, the heart of your virtual presence, where you can see what is happening in your system. Every message, every workflow, every detail, as we hear later on, will go through the Pulse, and you will like that as well. This is the favorites, and it will allow you to create shortcuts to actions, not only to pages, and we have you know, full history support and undoing all sorts of crazy stuff in Magnolia 5, not in the developer preview, but later on. Um, this allows you to create shortcuts to all the tasks that you have to do. So that you're just one click away, or basically two clicks away, from, for instance, creating a new press release in a specific section of a specific site. So if this is something you have to do three times a day, you would want to create a shortcut. These are the Trinity icons. We love them. And uh, I think Pascal is ready to demo. Exactly. They're, they're, they are very important for us. You will see why. So. I started Magnolia, login screen. I'm still a super user, as always. <laughs> For those who know it already, it's uh, the master of disaster. Um, but uh, I have not that much rights now, so I can just do what I can do. So that's good. I'm going to log in. For us, it was crucial to have this ability to transitions. Transition, transitions were key for our vision on how to interact with applications. So what you see now is the app shell. You can start every app. You can have a look what kind of other apps you have here. Let's see, tools. We have the JCR browser, which of course is not yet implemented. Um, <laughs> <laughs> as, a lot, as, <laughs> as a lot of other things aren't, uh, but I will show you then some really things that we can do. Um, you can have a look at the dev icon, client apps. Talking about apps, um, everybody can develop apps, everybody can plug them in and can register them to the place where they need it. Not at the main places, because these are the Magnolia um, standardized apps that we provide out of the box with the system. Can be more, you know we, know, we don't know how this will expand, but we tried hard that it's not going to be the limit of the functionality of this app screen window. I think if I may quickly, so what you see here is the, the app screen, as Pascal said. It allows you to add custom apps in this lower area here, and it's the core of the app platform that Magnolia now is. So you could think about Magnolia as core services with a lot of apps to access these services. And the, the, the main point to take home, a couple of points here is, A, this is the area where you can customize and extend Magnolia for your customers, for your organizations, to have personalized environments and access the repository and other services that we have. But also this is the area where you do the provisioning, right? So you can assign apps to persons or groups in your organizations, and as soon as somebody logs into their system, they will see exactly the apps that they're allowed to interact with. Back to Pascal. Yeah, so I'm going to switch to the Pulse. Um, by the way, there are only two things which I show you today which are just HTML pure and not working out of the box. This is the dashboard here. So if I switch to the dashboard, we haven't got activity stream yet implemented, and we haven't got the pages recently changed. Favorites as well, but the messages, the messaging framework is already here. 
So eventually Boris will send me another message then uh -huh. Uh -huh. later on. So uh, <laughs> favorites, favorites is the place where you put all the links, put all the bookmarks, in other words, uh, for the fast working where you can put all those things that you don't have to jump over to different kind of applications. So oh, they're all at your fingertips. They're all at one click away from every action. And this is amazing. And this is very much the way we like uh, the new iOS devices, Android devices, because they don't have to, you know, you don't have to know anything. Just okay. press the home button, you're back. So exactly the same thing. I'd like to, I'd like to um, start an application. Let's see, I start the contact application. And the fun thing here is about, did you see the transition? I can go back and have the next application started, the pages application. For those who are familiar with Magnolia 4.5 and earlier, I mean, it's still the same. It has the tree structure of a regular Magnolia page. And for the technicians, uh, it is a pure SDK 4.5. We didn't change anything on the SDK to make this work in 5.0. It's an automatic migration of the templates done based on the SDK. Here, you can switch again to assets, which are have nice bullets, but are not implemented yet. <laughs> yeah, we can't have everything. I mean, it's a preview. And so switching between things. I'm gonna, I try to go to the contact application here. We have this special application which we have put now on top in the edit uh, menu. You can have a look at the tree, at the list view, or at the thumbnail view. You have those thumbnails, some composers, and famous person everywhere. You can, ha you can go here and create a new one. So creating a new <laughs> contact, creating Boris again. Boris craft, uh, craft again, select again his image. So, yep. And still, this works, drag and drop, wow. So, okay, saving drop. again, but I don't use that uh, JavaScript button here. So, he works at Magnolia, and he has a contact tab, like the email address, like Boris at magnolia-cms.com. Good. Save changes, yeah, it's saved. And let's see. If Boris is here, yeah, Boris Craft is here. Let's see if we see the picture. Yes, Boris. Hey, it's, a, it's a little bit, bit pixelated. Bit huh? Pixelated, yeah. I look better so in real life. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so if I want to do changes, I can do changes wherever I like. If I would like to reuse now this contact application in a website, I jump to pages. So, I mean, you don't have to learn anything to use this, do you? I mean, I mean, compared to other software, like changing things, doing things, I mean, it's amazing. I love it. So going to the demo features, uh, to the content structure, let's open uh, this page. I'm just double-clicking it. Here we have the content template. So editing should be as simple as it was before. You know, I can switch here. By the way, um, this menu is not on every de device the same menu. If you perhaps would see another device later on, then it's a different menu. So I would like to have a new teaser component, and hopefully that works as well. So I have tried it already, but you never know. Select. I select Boris, because I want to have Boris now on my page. Yeah, that's the one I would like to have. So as you see, when I do these kind of things, uh, all major tasks are already implemented. They're already working, and they're all wor already working in speed. So it's not that it's just like some quirks to make it work, what we did, perhaps some tiny, um, but not everything. So if I would like to have a preview, I can switch to the preview. I have this preview of this page, you see. And if I would like to have the full screen, I just use the full screen app, so I have more space, and I can quickly remove the the header with the Trinity icons. So I, I can go back. The core point um, that Pascal just demonstrated is really how you can interact with the same set of content uh, through different apps. So we have the contacts app it stores its data in the repository, and um, the pages app that actually reads the data 
from the repository. And this way you will also be able to manage structured data, structured content is one of the things that we want to achieve in Magnolia 5 so that you can manage articles independently of the location in your website. And this was just the first glimpse of how this would work. It's also a glimpse of how you will be able to add apps that do pretty much anything by using these core services and interacting. Back to yep. you. So if I would like to quit now or like uh, close, close several things, I can close here, here, here. So it's amazing to ha how these transitions work here on a PC. It's not that amazing that you can do it. But I mean, uh, let's see what I can show you later on. So that's almost what it is. So complete page editing is here. Um, app interacting, so app inter, into, yeah. yeah. Interaction is done as well. If apps, uh, I would like to show you now the iPad. So, <laughs> oh, my hands are <laughs> sweating. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully it works. <laughs> so, um, I'm really proud to have exactly this. Do you see the metaphors? They're working on any device. They're working on a small device like this, 1,000 on 700 pixels just roughly, but they work even on, on 800 to 500 pixels because as we see right now, I'm going to start the editing. Do you see different kind of menus? Because I, when we saw the old menus, the traditional PC menus on the iPad, we said, no, 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 that's go not going to work. People don't want to have, you know, like menus and even, and even thinking about having, having a Floating, floating menus, floating windows, it doesn't work. You have to really think how can it work on every device. But I mean, this is something, something which is so easy to use. Hmm? So you can make it, you can have a look when you press this arrow, have a look what kind of uh, possibilities you have. For those who don't know that you can have to press the second and wait until the whole menu structure comes out. Okay, good. So if I would like to do the same things, which page did I have? Demo know. feature, I think it was the content template, huh? So I can go now in editing this page. And you see, works exactly the same. I'm going to make it bigger. Scroll around here as well. Want to have Boris Craft editing. And then, ha. Oh, yes. Here, Boris Craft editing. Don't want to have Boris Craft here anymore. Then I can, uh I jumped too fast. <laughs> ah, man. Did I? Don't get all nervous. Me, me as well. So, okay, <laughs> save changes, whatever. Um, so what you can do is here, you can add on components exactly the same way. Acting on the iPad is exactly the same way. So I'm going to open some new other applications. Well, would you like to say something? No, I think you will show a couple of the interaction patterns that we have on the iPad that we don't have yeah. on the desktop. Exactly. So I'm going to start other apps. I'm going to start other apps here. I would so like the whole start. idea about this interface is actually, since we have so many apps, we need to be able to switch between these apps really fast. You need to be able to go back to the position where you were before. It's one of the important things. If you go into an app, you want to you know, not navigate through the tree again. And um, this works yep. really nicely on the iPad. So, but you know, what's an iPad version of a software which doesn't have gestures? I mean. Gestures are crucial. It's not just a web app, and it's not just an app downloading an app, but you expect to have you know, like gestures, and you would like to do something with your hands except of clicking. So that's what I wanted to have as well. So if you, if, if you just do a pinch, or you go back, pinching, or you would like to switch between applications, just switch between applications. I mean, you, you can even do more than on the PC. You know, it's like, it's, like, it's like really amazing how you can do this. <laughs> Don't you think? I mean, you know it once and then you can do it forever. <laughs> I, I can do it still. <laughs> I go and get a coffee. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you can yeah, exactly. So, so that's more or less it. Um, of course, can start whatever you would like to start. And you can do changes as well here. Can go to Boris again. Edit contact Boris. Oh, now I can edit contact Boris Croft here. I mean, it works all, it's tested, it's really working. It's not fully functional, 100%. It's still a developer preview, so people can have a look 
what we already did. And um, yeah, cancel. Oh, what did you say? Time for some videos? Yeah, no. let's do. <laughs> if I want to have a look here, and um, if I press this, and it should happen now. Yeah, didn't. so you just saw the the messages and the pulse, actually. I think this exactly. is the interesting. Exactly, here's the pulse. So you have all the messages popping up all the time. If you, if you press more, you get the pulse. So all these kind of things are connected with the Trinity icons and with those kind of things. So Boris wants to show you... Are we mirrored? Um, wait, you have to click here. Yep. So, I think last but not least. I hope this will work. The, um, the core point, as we, you know, as we said, we really like Magnolia 5. I hope you do as well. We like the icons. We like what they stand for. And we want the world to see this. Um, so we will need you to show them. And uh, one of the things that we plan to do is launch a couple of videos to highlight the new Magnolia. Before it's going to be released, we want to tease. You know, that people can see what, you know, what cool things is in Magnolia 5. Exactly. Good. We need the camera to go off. Camera? Camera off. Good. Good. Thank you. So let's see if that works. Let's <laughs> <laughs> off record. You have an app to search the web, an app to find the best place to eat, an app to take pictures, and an app to share them with your family. Something missing? Add an app. Wouldn't it be great if your CMS was as simple and flexible as your smartphone? Magnolia 5, coming soon to a device near you. <laughs> so I hope you like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's your favorite song? Your favorite dish? Your favorite shirt? Your favorite team? We all have favorites. No matter what your favorite, with Magnolia 5, they are always at your fingertips. So you have more time to do the things that matter. Magnolia 5, coming soon to a device near you. And of course, last but not least, the third Trinity icon. What's the latest news? The hottest trend? The recent stats? The next event? To keep track of every message, every idea, every detail, Magnolia introduces The Pulse, so you'll never miss a beat. Magnolia 5, coming soon to a device near you. Right, so thank you. That was it. <laughs> I hope you have seen some things, could take some things home from, from our presentation. We were really happy, and I would like to point out, and we are really proud of our developers, our, all our employees. They did all an amazing job to make this possible, and I'm really happy that, and finally, went almost without the bug. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really great to have these kind of employees that worked so hard for a deadline, and you know how hard it is to achieve this for the last minute. Good. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.